From afar, the world is blue, with an all-encompassing ocean, the source of all life. Without the ocean, Earth would be as bleak, as barren, as Mars or the moon. With every drop of water you drink, every breath you take, you're connected to this no matter where on Earth you live. Life in the sea generates about 70% of the oxygen in the atmosphere. It absorbs much of the carbon dioxide. The ocean drives climate and weather, regulates and stabilizes temperature, shapes Earth's chemistry. Water evaporates from the surface of the sea, forms clouds that return water to land and sea as rain, sleet, and snow. covers nearly three quarters of the Earth's surface, but that's just the surface. The average depth is four kilometers, the maximum 11 kilometers, seven miles down. Ninety-seven percent of Earth's water is ocean. It should be no surprise that 97% of Earth's living space is ocean space. The greatest abundance and diversity of life is there, with forms that represent nearly all of the major categories of plants, animals, and microbes that exist on Earth. Life abounds even at the greatest depth, where the pressure is more than a thousand times greater than at the surface. Diving into the sea is like diving into the history of life on Earth, where creatures precede humankind by hundreds of millions of years. It's a vast liquid realm where diaphanous creatures thrive. Jellies, squids, silvery fish, Creatures that illuminate the deep sea darkness with their own living light. The terrain below holds most of the world's mountains. Entire chains of peaks that run down the major ocean basins like giant backbones. Most of the planet's volcanoes are in the sea, many forming the underpinnings of islands such as Hawaii, the Galapagos, Iceland, and thousands of others. With new technologies, submarines, ships, satellites, we've discovered more about the ocean in the past half century than during all preceding history. Yet most of the ocean, about 95%, has yet to be seen by human eyes, let alone explored. Far into the 20th century, people thought that the sea was infinite in its capacity to yield whatever we wanted to take from it and accept whatever we disposed of there. Over the years, hundreds of millions of tons of ocean wildlife have been extracted. And hundreds of millions of tons of noxious waste have been put into the sea. Industrial fishing has depleted fish and other ocean wildlife, some nearly to extinction. Many large and even small species of creatures have declined by more than 90% 
in half a century. Trawls and nets scrape the seafloor to catch shrimp and bottom-dwelling fish, scallops and oysters. They're the equivalent of using bulldozers to catch songbirds and squirrels. Pollutants from agriculture, industrial waste, and sewage have seeped into the ocean, accumulating in marine organisms, even in the icy waters of the Arctic and the Antarctic. More than 300 dead zones now darken coastal areas worldwide. Plastic debris is dumped in such quantities that a huge floating mass of garbage twice the size of Texas has formed in the Pacific, and plastic clogs the shores of even remote Pacific islands. The construction of coastal cities has brought about the loss of coral reefs, mangrove forests, and vast wetlands, and the birds and marine life that once thrived there. Recent changes in the ocean are compounding the impacts of global warming. And in turn, climate change, increasing sea level, and acidification are altering the nature of the ocean. Now we know. One of the great discoveries of our time is that there are limits to what we can take out and what we can put in without dire consequences to the nature of the ocean. Thus, to the underpinnings of what makes life possible for us. Now that we know, we can do what it takes to reverse the troubling trends, to treat the ocean as if our lives depend on it. Because they do.